The eternal miniatures debate. For some of us, for others, not. Metal versus plastic. Metal versus plastic. And, and by plastic, I'm going to put in there um, resin. You know, whether it's GW Falcast or some sort of boutique resin type model, we're, we're going to lump that in plastic. So plastic versus metal. From the perspective of a war gamer, from the perspective of someone that's going to utilize their miniature collection on the table, what do you prefer? What do you prefer? Now, sometimes you don't have a choice. The miniature line that you want or to play a certain game, it's only available in plastics, either because of the manufacturing or just the price point. Other times, your choice, especially if it's an older type miniature, metal is the only way to go. But everything being equal, you know, Battletech being a good example. This wasn't going to be a Battletech vlog, but we're going to pull Battletech in here. You have some really, really good, in, in my opinion, you know, the, the unseen reseen and some of the redesigned mechs, even some of the classic sculpts on there, really, really good metal. But we have the game of Armored Combat. We have the starter set. As of this podcast vlog, the Kickstarter is still cooking, right? They're still, I guess, starting to make the molds and transfer them. We're probably a year out, knowing Catalyst, maybe two years out. Um, but at some point, we're going to have a whole array of really looking, um, amazing looking plastic mechs. And, and the plastic mechs in the game of Armored Combat, uh, the detail is fantastic. They really do look good. So from that perspective, what do you prefer? I prefer metal. I, I do. Now, admittedly, there's a little bit of bias in there. Um, playing war games years ago, actually going be pre-war game, playing D&D, uh, we were going to run this big adventure. My, my friend Marcus got him into playing D&D at the start of the summer. I was the DM. And he was going to go back to Brazil at the end of the summer, and he wanted to take on Tiamat. Like, that was his goal, take on Tiamat. So I literally said, all right, this entire summer, entire summer, we're going to play D&D nonstop. And this was actually AD&D. So leveling up was actually a really big deal. And being a level 13 or 14, 15 level fighter was a big deal on there. You had to really earn that. We're going to level up. You're going to play D&D. And literally the day before you get on that plane to go back to Brazil, you're going to fight Tiamat. Whether you're ready or not, I'm going to give you a whole year. And... We wanted to make that last fight really, really memorable on there. Extremely memorable. So over the course of the summer, we started obtaining miniatures. Um, we started building, I don't want to say Tiamat's castle, but kind of this portal that they were going to go through. So we had a paper mache portal that we, we painted up. Um, we had some cardboard that we texturized. I mean, we had a really, uh, for a bunch of guys that were doing this for the first time and painting miniatures for the first time, we had a pretty a pretty interesting pretty interesting setup and, and Tiamat was just a generic dragon uh, that my buddy Naps sculpted on some additional like clay dragon heads. I mean he was a fantastic artist and I, I, I was skeptical. I, I was. But as soon as we got some paint on that modified miniature, it, it looked good. And that was my first kind of push into miniature gaming, miniature war gaming. From there, I jumped into historicals. I, I say this in context in that um, early on, you didn't have the availability of plastics. Everything was metal. And what, what always engaged me and still engages me, Battletech, I've got the current sculpts, and they're fantastic. But the rest of my collection, how, okay, publicly, I can never publicly admit how many miniatures I own because it, it might get back to Mrs. Fritz, and then channel shut down, everything's over, done, finished. I've got a decent amount. And yes, I will be acquiring more miniatures. But with, the, with Metal Miniatures Wargaming, for me, even to this day now, it's visual. I'm trying to step out of space and time. I'm trying to live in that narrative, whether it's Battletech or um, Chain of Command, some other miniature gaming system out there, and, and create something memorable on the tabletop. And I find that it's mostly a visual game. There's some physical interaction rolling in the dice. But when I pick those pieces up, when I pick my mech up, and, and it's funny, I was thinking about this the other day. Um, I was um, playing my commando, the metal commando. And when I picked that commando up, 
the heft of the metal hex base, the heft of the metal miniature, feeling that in my hand, it just, it's like a physical connection. It, signal, it signals something in my mind. I, I just appreciate the heft of it on there. I prefer metal. I just do for, for the feel and the durability. Now, on the opposite side, I'm not really much of a converter on there. Even with Warhammer 40,000, I have a couple of conversions. I've never really developed the skill for it. Uh, the conversion pieces that I have, others have done for me. I understand if you're playing a gaming system or you're into conversions, because that's the part of the hobby you enjoy, then you know metal's out. Resin's probably out too. Plastic, you can do um, a lot, especially if it's a multi-point kit. You know, head swaps, arm swaps, uh, different backpack, different weapons, combi weapons, all that type of stuff on there. So I realize if you're coming into the game from a, a building and paint perspective, that's not a bias. You're probably going to go with plastic miniatures. But overall, overall, just out of curiosity in, in the comments, what system or systems do you play? And given the choice, or, or I should say the bulk composition of your collection, metal or plastic slash resin slash something else on there, your preferences.